To uh, conclude the free part series I posted on the Seiko 7S26, I just wanted to make some additions and corrections. Uh, in this video, I'm going to address three things uh, pointed out to me, and I thank those who commented to help me keep me on my toes. So the first thing, um, you'll notice in part three, when I initially replaced the brass intermediate pinion, I placed it back to front and a little later, it magically appeared to have turned around and was placed correctly. I'd spotted my error, but kept it in the video edit and made no mention of this. And for this, I apologize, as I understand for anyone following along, this could have been confusing. Now, I did make some annotations on the video, but uh, I do understand that annotations do not appear on mobiles or tablets or embedded players. So I make mention of it here just to show you the correct way of placing this pinion. Now, the second thing pointed out to me was that I didn't show the lubrication of the train wheel shocks protected springs. Now, it's actually very difficult to film the removal of these end stones as my big head tends to get in the way of the camera shot, although it was much easier to film the removal of the balance end stones. But several people asked, so I found this 7S26 scrap movement in my box and will attempt to do this without my eyeglass. So removing the uh, shock springs is a fairly straightforward job. Uh, two pairs of tweezers, um, just turn the spring 90 degrees and out it pops. Carefully take it away. The uh, end stone uh, doesn't have a setting or mount uh, like the on the balance. Uh, so it's literally just uh, taking off the end stone and you can see the oil that's on this end stone is fairly intact. But we'll continue and take out the other end stone. And now I've cleaned the end stones and I'm just shining my light on them to show you that they're spotless. And one way of doing this is to oil the end stone uh, in a standard way with, um, with a standard oiler. But this is uh, actually very awkward uh, because when replacing the end stone, you have to flip it over and you really need to get it bang on center. I failed here. And so I've moved it, which is not good uh, because that will have displaced the oil. Uh, so that's a, a bad way of doing it, but I'll just continue and um, replace the shock spring, which is an incredibly tricky job uh, with no eyeglass in. And as you can see, I've moved the end stone again uh, again, that's displaced the oil, uh, which is bad. Um, but in this case, I'll just continue. I wouldn't do this with a, a customer's watch. Um, very difficult without my eyeglass, this. I'm usually wearing a, a times 10 magnification eyeglass, and I've got my head right over close and it's a two second job, um, but I'm doing this from a, with my head around about two feet away because the camera is in the way. So as you can see, the end stone once again has moved. Not very good to oil the end stone first. And there's a better way, which I'll show you with the other end stone once this is in place. 
So I'm really struggling here. And finally, the little sucker gets in there. Okay, now with the other end stone, I'm going to place the end stone in dry with no oil. And I'm going to use an automatic oiler once everything's in place. Now this is better because if the end stone moves whilst I'm replacing the shock spring, I'm not displacing the oil and of course that is much more desirable because if the oil gets displaced I've got to start all over again. I have to take out the end stone, uh, clean it, re-oil it and put the end stone back. A lot of messing around. So this way I've put it in dry. You see I've moved the look. It's very difficult because I'm so far away from the uh, from the workpiece. Let's have another go. Now I'm putting it in upside down. <laughs> And say much easier with uh, with a times ten eyeglass and with your face pretty much touching the workpiece if you if you know what I mean. It's a much simpler job, but it has to be done because you can't reassemble this watch with dirty end stones. Okay, so the second shock spring finally I've got it in place. And as I said, it's the end stone is dry, so there's been no oil displacement. I'm going to use this automatic oiler, and I can oil the end stone with this through the back end. And it's really, really easy to use. Uh, it's got a little needle which you withdraw, and as you withdraw it, oil comes out. And as the needle comes out again, uh, it um, pushes the oil through the hole, pivot hole. You see this is about the amount of oil that comes out, which is just about the right amount. And, um, and that's it. It's as easy as that. <laughs> it wasn't that easy. And finally, I... Uh, it was pointed out to me that I did not show the optimal placement of the oscillating weight in accordance with uh, Seiko's recommendations on their service sheet. So I'll just demonstrate that now. So let's go back to our scrap 7S26 movement, which... Uh, I've uh, removed the oscillating weight and I just want to show you this is the first reduction wheel and you notice there's a little hole and if we just turn this around so that uh, it aligns with the hole on the balance cock here. Now once these are in perfect alignment uh, just observe the crown and take the oscillating weight and the center point of the oscillating weight needs to be aligned with the winding stem. So 
So with the hole on the reduction wheel aligned with the hole on the balance cock and the center point of the oscillating weight aligned with the winding stem, now I will just uh, hold the oscillating weight steady with my tweezers here whilst I use my large driver to screw down the center nut. So in accordance with Seiko's documentation, this is the optimal position for the first reduction wheel and the oscillating weight in order to get the best performance. So thank you for watching and if you are new to my video content then please consider subscribing. It's free and you'll be informed when I publish new content. And you can also find me on Facebook and Twitter. Also be sure to visit my website at www.watchrepairtalk.com and here you're going to find even more content and find out how you can watch my premium watch repair videos. And my latest video is the full strip down and service of a, a Rolex Calibre 3075, a GMT Master. And this can be watched exclusively on Watch Repair Talk, uh, but will be released on YouTube very soon. And finally, you can support these videos and be able to have exclusive access to my premium watch repair videos by becoming a patron. Details in the description below.